coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. If a Babalao came and told you this baby will not develop well, you bind the Babalao. Abi, you won't even listen to the Babalao because he's dressed with a feather in his hair. But when your doctor, who went to Harvard, tells you that, it's a prediction. How do you flourish in the middle of that? My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Previously on Fresh Dew. Big corporations, your entire career has been trained to look up to. They're all prophesying. They're all giving predictions about your future. In different places and different areas. How do you flourish in the midst of those predictions when what they are saying doesn't line up with what you believe or think? God is saying about you. Time.com says this. Speculation about a potential recession has plagued much of 2022 and is now seen as all but inevitable in 2023. Asset management giant BlackRock recently wrote in its 2023 Global Outlook report, that a recession is foretold. Everybody say foretold. That's a pred prediction, prophecy. While in December, JP Morgan Chase CEO reiterated a prediction, I didn't write this, that a recession is coming in 2023. A survey published by Business Focus Think Tank, the conference board in October, found that 98% of CEOs in the US were preparing for a recession for the next 18 months. Recession is a period of temporary economic decline in which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. Does that sound like flourishing? Hello? Does it sound like flourishing? Whether in Nigeria, whether in the US, globally, the prediction is a recession. 
the prediction is that things are going to get worse. That's the prediction. You might say, well, I, Pastor, I didn't know this until you came and told me. Now, why did, why did you tell me this thing? You may not know it like I just read it, but you know it every day you go to the market. You know it when your children's school fees come. You know it when you try to buy Gary compared to what you bought last time. This does not sound like flourishing. So let's begin to look at some things that will help us know how to deal with God's word in the middle of alternative prophecies. Let's begin to look at some facts that we need to establish. So write this down. Four things. Four things about prophecies and predictions. Four things about prophecies and predictions. When I say prophecies, I refer to the prophetic word from God. When I say predictions, I refer to forecasts like this from human experts. I gave you one example of economic predictions. There are health predictions as well. You go to your doctor and he tells you, you fill all the forms, you find out your family history, and he tells you it's very, very likely that before you're 50, you're going to have high blood pressure issues. It runs in your family. And just like he said it, before you turn 50, you start checking your BP, checking your BP, and true to prophecy, you start having high blood pressure issues because it runs in your family. They pick up a baby and they say, this baby, looking at this baby, this baby will not develop very quickly. It's called this and this and this. We've checked all the signs and symptoms, and this is the way it works. Because they're experts, and they have the facts, and they tell you. And you are seeing it. They're experts. If a babalao came and told you this baby will not develop well, you buy the babalao. Abi, you won't even listen to the babalao because he's dressed with a feather in his hair. But when your doctor, who went to Harvard, tells you that, it's a prediction. How do you flourish in the middle of that? So the first thing we'll start looking at today, talking about four things, about prophecies and predictions. Are you following me so far? The first thing we'll start looking at today is this. Write this down. Both prophecies from God and predictions from human experts. Both prophecies from God and predictions from human experts are valid. Both are valid and accurate. And they are delivered with authority. From within, there are different realms of operation. I'll say it again. Both prophecies from God and predictions from human experts are valid and accurate and are delivered with authority. Everyone say authority. Within their different realms of operation. Those last words are the key. So predictions are valid. The IMF is correct. Time.com is correct. The World Bank is correct. They are valid. They are accurate. And they speak with authority. Not your bank in the village. They say that nobody will listen to them. This is the IMF. But they speak within their realm of operation. The prophetic word that says this is a season of flourishing, to expand, to increase, to attract attention, to flourish abroad, to bloom, is correct. 
and it's valid and accurate. And it's delivered with authority within a different realm of operation. So before you in 2023, in this season, there are two realms of operation. And they are both before you. You wake up every morning, both realms are there. Both speaking with authority. Speaking valid and accurate statements in their realms. And both realms are available to you. You are like an amphibious creature. An amphibious creature operates in water and in land. Somebody tell me one amphibious creature. A frog, right? A frog is amphibious. Put it inside water, you go. You'll be fine. On land, it will jump and go. You're amphibious in that regard. You can operate in both realms. Well, you should operate a different discussion. But you can operate in both realms. What are the realms? You know them. The supernatural, spiritual realm. And the natural, physical realm. Both are available to you. We begin to unlock the key as to how we can even think of maximizing the prophetic word. Every year it comes. The alternatives are present. Every blessed day. Right now in church, as you are listening to me speak, your mind may have wandered off to an alternative you were told yesterday. It is valid. It's accurate in that realm. Both realms are available to you. The supernatural realm and the natural realm. And you're amphibious. You can operate in both realms. What becomes doubly challenging is that the prophets in both realms speak with authority. They're sure of what they're saying. Let's look at the authority of both realms. Write that down. The authority of both realms. There is authority in both realms. Authority is the power or right to give orders, to make decisions, and enforce obedience. Is the power to influence others. Is the power to influence others, especially because of one's commanding manner, especially because of one's commanding manner or one's recognized knowledge, knowledge about something. Authority, I've skipped some definitions because of time, is the power or right to give orders, to make decisions and enforce obedience. The right to act in a specified way. The power to influence, influence others. Especially because of one's commanding manner or one's recognized knowledge about something. Ecclesiastes 8.4 is a scripture where most of us are familiar with. And the Amplified Version says this. For the word of a king is authority and power. And who can say to him, what are you doing? I read it again. For the word of a king is authority. You have authority there. That must be different amplified. And power. And who can say to him, what are you doing? Whenever we read this scripture, who do we refer to? God. Who else? 
When you quote that scripture, who do you refer to? Huh? Say with confidence now. You, you're yourself. And you're right. You're a king, aren't you? But that scripture is not exclusive to you. It's not exclusive to you. It wasn't written only for believers. That scripture was written for anybody who is a king. Hello? It was written for anybody who is a king. The governor is a king. It applies to him. He speaks with authority and power. Who can say to him, what are you doing? Go and try and tell him what he's doing. See his house, go and tell him. Your father in your house is a king. Some are tyrant kings. Go and ask your father what he's doing. You might find your load outside. But where the word of a king is, there is power and authority. That is what applies to both realms. So when these human experts are prophesying, they are prophesying with authority. And you have no right to go and ask IMF why they said what they said. They will rubbish you. You have no right to go and quarrel with your doctor and ask him after a PhD in that area of medicine that you don't even know how to put an injection, why he said what he said. He's a king. And he's speaking with authority. Let me go ahead of myself. If you don't like what he said, get out of his realm. If you don't like what he said, get out of his realm. But he speaks with authority. So what is the authority based on when they speak? The authority is based on, write this down, intensive research and analysis of proven, proven factors that are measurable. So before they will give you a statement or a diagnosis, they've tracked things for a period of time, they've done statistics, they've studied it, proven and measurable. And they're accurate. They're correct. The authority is also based on the educational background of the expert. When a professor speaks, you listen. When a resident doctor speaks, you think. When a mephiele speaks, you wonder about many things. When the World Bank speaks, and IMF, you sit up. It's based on the level of the expertise. When a neophyte lawyer speaks, you think I can tell him what to do. When a son speaks, you sit up because he's carrying some kind of authority. So intensive research, analysis, educational background, all of these constitute to form the authority. Globally, you've got the... I had to ask my husband these things. Let me not come and disgrace him now, not answer what he told me. You have the United Nations who are kings with authority over political associations and governments. They'll tell you who, which country can relate with who and who should not relate with who and how you should relate. They're called the United Nations. They are part of the New World Order. Sure, I got it correct. Then you have the IMF and World Bank. They are kings with authority over the financial and economic systems. You've got WHO. They speak with authority over global health care. They speak with authority about things like the pandemic. They told us Africa would die and perish. And perish. At the conference I came from research from in Lagos, Dr. Etta Otterbill took a great teaching. And one of the things he dealt with was the pandemic. And he mentioned this prophecy from people, how Africa was going to be cleaned out, perish, everybody die on the road. Even Bill Gates and Melinda Gates were already burying us. They spoke with authority. And they had statistics. Africa was the least hit country. Continent, rather. Least hit. The least hit. And we had the worst infrastructure, the worst government. And vaccine didn't even get to us in time. 
The son that came, they sold. Son that came, they men drama. So I don't want to get into his message, but some someone kept us. Someone kept this continent for a reason. But the issue is this: WHO spoke, and people listened. The whole, con the whole continent, the whole world, shut down because of what they said. That is authority. Doctors look up to that. So when your doctor tells you, you're under the same influence. And they're speaking with authority. WTO, they're kings over trade globally. Who can trade with who? What are the rules of trade? How can you trade? How can you sell your product as a country? Who can you sell to? Who can you not sell to? Kings, nobody can say to them, what are you doing? Because they speak with authority in their own realms. Both realms are available to you. You can operate in both realms. Glory be to God. Well, right beside them is the believer, the prophet. And I didn't want to just say the prophet, say, oh, Pastor Ketch, or Prophet so and so. You, you are the prophet. When you prophesy along with the prophets, you are the prophet. Because what the prophet does at the pulpit is prophesy along with the prophet. It's what I heard Jesus say, I say. So you follow the same pattern. What you hear Jesus say, or what you hear me say, if you believe I'm a prophet of God, you say so, you become a prophet as well. So when we speak, we also speak with authority. Not backed by WHO, not backed by WTO, not backed by United Nations, not backed by IMF. We speak with authority back from above. The most supreme authority, the same authority that backed Jesus, the prophet, the, let me use Pashala's word, the Ubonge prophet of all prophets. That prophet, when he spoke, he too had authority. And our authority, unlike the one we said is based on intensive research, analysis, educational, our authority is simple. It's based on the call and the grace of God upon the prophets. It's based on the call and the grace of God upon the prophets. It's based on the prophet's ability to develop an intense intimacy with the word of God. And it's based on the prophet's ability to stay in step and in dance with the Spirit of God. It's based on the call and the grace of God. That must be there upon the prophet. Remember, you're also a prophet. The grace of God is upon you. It's based on the prophet's ability to develop an intense intimacy with the Word of God. It's also based on the prophet's ability to stay in sync and in step in his or her dance with the Holy Spirit. Next on Fresh Dew. That's what that verse was saying. I'm transferring it to you. All has been given to me. I transfer it to you. So IMF has you to contend with. You didn't hear me. WHO has you to contend with. Your daughter's report has you to contend with. What has been said in your company about your career has you to contend with. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, 
the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.